This is one of my first quadcopters. It's an F450. It was featured in my Mighty Glad to Fly video. I've had a lot of fun with this one. It usually lands and crashes and breaks arms, which is very aggravating. And now it just looks like a big X and it's kind of like a little bit dated in my opinion. You know, not many people fly this exact frame anymore because I don't know, it's kind of the old ones. So I got this one from Banggood. This is a, uh, it says QAV330, but their website says ZMR330. And this one is supposed to be big enough to support the eight inch props that I have on this one. These are running 1300 KV motors. And so hopefully they'll just transfer right over to this when I'm finished. Well, the box itself didn't make it in very good condition through the uh, mail system, but I think the parts inside uh, were fine. It comes wrapped in this foam and here's the instructions which this calls it a QAV something or other down here and look at these instructions and if you have any idea what China, how to read Chinese or whatever this is there it is that's all the instructions it came with inside here it has yep that's it, it came with the foam and this is the uh, these are the plates for it and these are the uh, pieces inside the spacers and the screws and that sort of thing here are all the plates that come with it, the uh, middle plate, the upper plate, the lower plate, and the uh, arms and camera mount, I suppose, and the other camera, FPV camera mount, and the uh, legs. But one of the biggest things I'm gonna wonder, I've been wondering about this is how thick these um, arms are. So let's go ahead and measure this. Three millimeters, and it's down here three millimeters too? Yep, spot on, good. Check another one, see if they all come up about the same. 301, real good. 298, real good. And the last one coming in at 304. Awesome. And let's see, this uh, top plate here is one and a half millimeters. The main plate looks like about two. Yeah, two millimeters for the main plate. And the lower one, one and a half again. And it, come, and it comes with your... Uh, FPV camera mount here, this is what I was talking about. And then the four legs that usually seem to fall off and get lost in the weeds. There's two different screw sizes in this set. There's a long one that goes through the legs and the short one that goes into holding the uh, spacers up between the uh, plates. When you're assembling this, the first thing you wanna do is get the uh, bottom plate mounted up like this and make sure you're using the uh, short screws. And this is where all your ESCs could go down the bottom plate if you wanted to. Then for the middle plate, you want to get it set up to where it has the spacers on here ready for the top plate to go on. Here I have three of the arms mounted on, and you can tell there's a lot of space down underneath here between the um, middle plate and the lower plate. And these arms just mount right in here between the spacers and the middle plate. Now these arms, they're, like I said, they're three millimeters thick, so they're, they're pretty hefty. And if I try to bend it, you can see it gives a little bit of bend. I'm trying not to break it, <laughs> or not break it on purpose anyway. And, uh, but when I look at this, I think it's probably, if I'm going to break it, which I may, it's probably going to break right here where these grooves are cut, where the landing gear looks like it's supposed to be held in place. It has the two screws up here on the end that kind of hold, the frame kind of holds on like this. So it makes me think that it may not be real solid, but I think it'll be way better than these. These, they tend to just touch the ground and just snap. Of course, I'm not using the DGI ones because they're too expensive. Instead, I'm using these, um white and red ones and I've actually had some black ones and some yellow ones but they've all broken so you know I'm kind of looking forward to trying this carbon fiber because I'm hoping this will be a lot stronger than those are and uh, anyway it looks like this it has the four mounting holes up here that look like they're that like should be fine for my 1300 kV motors once you have the arms mounted to the lower plate and the middle plate then it's just a matter of putting these impossible dampeners in place and mounting the top plate up onto the top of the frame and it comes out pretty nice and the uh, camera mount just kind of wedges inside there just like it does on most carbon fiber um, uh, quadcopters. Now the only thing that's odd about this is if you look at this picture the uh, spacers are up here, one up here by the uh, camera there's one here in the middle and then there's one back here and it's plugged into the end and it's plugged in a hole here okay so if we look at this quadcopter that would be this hole plugged into the end, but it doesn't really line up quite right. So anyway, if you go ahead and put the spacer out here, it doesn't line up with the hole that's drilled up here in the top, so you can't leave it out here. 
Now on this side, I went ahead and I moved it up here, from back here up to here, and it lines up with these with this open space here, so you can actually use the uh, spacer back here in the back. But it just kind of makes this platform back here a little bit weak, but you know, not. It's probably not that big of a deal. This is a 3.30 size quadcopter, so I was going to measure the distance in here between the uh, upper and middle plate. And there it is. What am I getting to? About 40 millimeters. And if I measure between the uh, lower plates here, the uh, space comes up to be about 13.2. Mm, Two, six millimeters for the lower section. So that should be plenty of space inside here for ESCs and airflow to still get through. Also, it has the mounting holes up here on the top for a NASA 32 board, the little smaller ones, and it also has the uh, larger holes for like a KK2 board. Just to show you, the two uh, holes on the inside here are about 35 millimeters apart, and these outer ones are about 50-ish. I'm having a hard time doing this. About 50, 51, somewhere in there. But so if you have a 35 millimeter board, it should fit in there like the KK2 or the NASA 32 on those smaller holes. Here's the scale, I got it zeroed out. We'll go ahead and put this on here and weigh everything together. It comes up to be 234.6 grams, and that's for the 330 size quadcopter. So here it is fully assembled with the uh, landing gear on the bottom and the only advice on this landing gear is you just got to muscle it on there, that, that's about it. So anyway, here it is sitting next to my uh, F450, just for a size comparison. Here it is next to a ZMR250, and here it is next to my Q200, which is just a 200 millimeter size frame. So this has been an overview of the ZMR330 frame. The uh, instructions call it the QAV330 frame, but that's probably because it has this kind of um, plate on the bottom, which is similar to the QAV250. Anyway. I'm going to be moving the parts off of this quadcopter over to here because I just haven't flown this frame much because I don't think it looks cool, and especially not nearly as cool as this one does. And this thing just looks like a giant bug flying through the air, <laughs> even more so than my 250s. And I, I'm so amused by how big this is because I feel like I just took it out of like an enlarging machine or something. Anyway, this has a, the 1300s and a KK2 board. And anyway, we'll see how that flies in here. Anyway, if you have any questions about this frame, leave them in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.